Hey, good morning, Church on the Ridge. Hey, it's Wednesday, and I'm looking forward to a great day. I'm teaching a class on spiritual warfare, so I've been in that mode and just thinking about all the things that God wants to do through us and to use us to impact his world. When God does things, sometimes we, we can't comprehend what he's doing. It's hard for us to understand. There's a story in the Old Testament about Moses who led the people of Israel out of Egypt. You know the story. And they're wandering around the desert for 40 years because they could never trust God. And one of the things that they whined and complained about, I mean, you would whine and complain about this too, I think I would, is they didn't have any water out there in the desert. And so they go to Moses, Moses, we're out here and there's no water. Moses goes to God, which is what the people should have done, but he goes to God and God says, hey, go strike this rock and out of it will pour water and, and it's a wonderful miracle and it does and people are taken care of. They're, uh, they're able to take care of their families, plus all the livestock, everything, there's enough water that came out, it's really cool. Well, we come to the end, Moses is getting old, he's been with these guys now for 40 years, hearing them complain the entire time, almost, it, it feels like the whole time there's something they're complaining about. And uh, once again, they run out of water. So now, many years later, and God tells Moses, hey, this time I want you to go and speak to the rock, and water will come out. Well, Moses disobeys God. And he takes his staff and he stick and he bangs on the rock just like he did many years before. And God tells Moses, Moses, because you disobeyed me and you didn't do what I told you to do, you're not going to enter into the promised land. I know you've been wandering out here for 40 years and that's been your whole hope is to make it finally to the land flowing with milk and honey. But you disobeyed me, so you're not going. And the next, uh, you know, when we see Moses, he's taken up to the mountain where he dies and we don't see him anymore. And this is kind of a sad story because where they, uh, where, where he went to, he could overlook and see into the promised land, but he never got to step foot into it. And I thought, wow, that's kind of harsh, you know, uh, disobedience. What a, you know, what a, what a strong punishment. And all he did was, you know, strike the rock like he did before instead of speak to it. But God is looking for, you know, obedience from us. You know, half obedience is not obedience. Almost obedience is not obedience. Uh, late obedience is not obedience. Obedience is, is obedience. And so Moses, you know, gets um, uh, disciplined for it. Well, fast forward now, a thousand years later, Jesus is walking in uh, Israel and he takes his three buddies we talked about yesterday. He goes up onto this mountain and he's transformed. The Bible, the word is transfigured, but it just really means transformed. And he's transformed into his state as he is in heaven. His clothes become blazingly white. It's kind of like the veil, the, the, the glow of the Lord upon him. That, and Moses had it when he would talk to God and he had to cover his face. Well, he's there. And, uh, and then this is so cool because it says, and there was with him Elijah and guess who else? Moses. Though Moses, uh, back when he was, when, when he was uh, alive, didn't get to enter the promised land, he did with Jesus. So somewhere in that process between those thousand years, uh, he and God got together and God said, all right, Moses, I'm going to let you go into the promised land and I'll let you go there with my son and with your buddy, Elijah. And so, uh, Elisha, and so, you know, really, really cool story. I don't know where you're at today, but here's a God who, a, a God who relents, a God who loves, a God who shows grace and favor, and God's grace and favor is on you today. No matter what you've done or how, you know, if you've been disobedient, hey, go to God, talk with him, reason with him, let his grace fill your life today. Jesus, I thank you, God, that you're a God who shows grace and does amazing things, even when we feel like, oh, that was not fair. God, you do the great stuff. So Lord, I trust you today. I want to see your favor in my life. I want to receive your grace today in Jesus' name. Have a great day. I love you, Church on the Ridge, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow.